Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Saturday weekend, October 21st, 2023. It's about 12 o'clock p.m. Straight up noon here along the West Coast in California. Did have some earthquake activity out there into the uh, Australia region. The latest quake, though, shows a 1.5 into California. Now, uh, a little bit of difference here in the magnitude from this earthquake that struck up here, uh, down here, I should say, in Australia, near the Apollo Bay, Austra uh, Australia area. Earlier this morning, I'd say about, uh, looks like about four hours or so ago, we've seen a 4.8 earthquake down here. The uh, Australian government of geoscience reporting this earthquake as a 5.0 at about seven kilometers deep. Either way, it was an earthquake that uh, looks like quite a few folks did report filling. Uh, the general shake map out here across the Australia region does show some of this uh, shaking being picked up around the Melbourne area earlier this morning as well. Although uh, it looks like most of that shaking just going to be generally light out here uh, around the epicenter. Uh, looks like some potential strong shaking out there uh, being felt by uh, a few folks out there in the area of Australia. So it's been a little while since we've seen any uh, earthquake activity specifically out here in this region of Australia. Uh, here's the USGS map of the Digifillet reports. Again, Melbourne sitting over here and uh, all other areas. Looks like, like I say, it looks like a few folks did report feeling that uh, as some strong shaking earlier this morning. Uh, now we have seen a little bit of earthquake activity ramping up here south of the region of Australia. Uh, with this earthquake here coming in yesterday, 4.7 on the uh, divergent boundary here between the Pacific. Well, this is going to be the uh, Indian and the Antarctica Ridge. The uh, general plate dynamics down here does show a divergent boundary, the separation here of the uh, oceanic crust. Uh, and for the most part, that does tend to, you think about it, add strain up here against that plate, the Australia plate. Uh, so a little bit of movement kicking up here in this area. Um, doesn't look like New Zealand's had, had any adjustment down there. Well, we'll check that out here in just a second. But I do want to go back here and look at historical data from the USGS with regards to uh, earthquake activity here. Uh, we're just going to go over the, over the past uh, quite a few years here and look at this area of Australia. Just specifically this area down here. I know other areas can see earthquakes, but we're concerned with this region. See what we have for historical data. Now this is uh, 4.5 and above. Looks like earlier this year, we did have some movement up north, uh, mostly in the 4 range, although a 5.9 has struck. Uh, I think I remember this earthquake back in 2021 outside of Melbourne. That was felt pretty uh, all over the place. I remember that one. Uh, so they can get some, it does look like they can get some earthquakes specifically around this area. Um, Tasmania area as well. So not, uh, not super common, but it uh, looks like a little bit of movement does kick up here on occasion. I don't know if the USGS put anything out there on their uh, information site. doesn't look like it. So uh, we'll continue to watch that. It doesn't look like there's any aftershock activity um, for now. Let me hide all this stuff here real quick. map I'm not seeing <clears throat> not seeing anything really showing up here doesn't mean there isn't any but uh, at least according to the uh, Australia government site here not a whole lot showing up there for that uh, earthquake I'm not for sure if they put any news articles out here or not doesn't look like it uh, either way continue to watch that uh, New Zealand area now let's go back over here to New Zealand the most recent map and see what we have uh, nothing from the USGS map but we're going to check out GeoNet servers here real quick and see what we have there 
for the all magnitudes map. <clears throat> Uh, it looks like a little bit of activity stirring up here in the last 24 minutes or so. Four point one about an hour ago. This is off the uh, uh, North Island coast here, 33 kilometers deep. A couple other earthquakes out there as well uh, in the two and one range. 3.7 about an hour ago so it looks like a little bit of movement stirring up here off the North Island area uh, still expecting the uh, New Zealand area to show a little bit of movement here there's some of that earthquake activity within the last 12 hours or so uh, showing somewhat elevated activity so kind of just watching this seeing how it uh, picks up thinking it should here soon Uh, see what else we got going on around here. Looks like a pretty good uh, cluster of activity across the Indonesia Islands area once again here today. Um, that, for the most part, mixed bag between uh, earlier, uh, well, I should say late last night and early this morning. Seeing uh, quite a bit of movement and adjustment across this area. Even for the USGS map, that's a bunch of activity here on the EMSC model globe. It is a cluster here in this area of earthquake activity today. Uh, definitely a bunch of earthquake activity happening. There's a 3.5 showing up right now as a aftershock there in the Australia area. Now one of these models showing a 5.5. That may be the EMSC uh, that was reporting that for the main quake that is uh, middle america trench pretty active as well quite a few threes and fives in here a bunch of fours mixed in there as well that's been an area of interest here recently seen a pretty good cluster around the caribbean plate of course the subduction zone here middle america trench that's uh this area right here when we see that happen generally generally we watch this area of the caribbean plate here uh, for some movement that's a good sign that we're getting uh, quite a bit of pressure within that region and uh, no doubt there's definitely been quite a few earthquakes there yesterday and today so continue to watch that there's a little bit of swarming going on here uh, just off the coast of Mexico uh, just north of the Guatemala area as well northwest of there or due west uh, quite a few fours kicking off there in a swarm fashion so we'll continue to watch that for maybe Maybe some uh, larger scale activity stirring up there today. Uh, there's some of this activity, St. George's area. 131 kilometers deep here into the subduction area. 4.5. And uh, Puerto Rico Trench still seeing some activity as well in the last hour or so. So pretty active it looks like today across uh, certain regions. Uh, for the states, let's see what we got here. A lot of this activity from yesterday along the Northern California coastline. It's going to be this activity here from yesterday uh, up into the Pacific Northwest. Looks like Mount St. Helens has had a, a little bit of earthquake activity yesterday and today. Nothing big brewing up. I mean, we checked the gas emissions last night and the update doesn't show like there's anything elevated at the moment just seeing this earthquake activity which is uh, quite interesting so we could be getting maybe maybe getting ready to see some activity up there who knows we'll have to keep an eye on that one little earthquake down here uh san simeon area 1.5 down southern california very quiet not a whole lot going on down there today look at that only a handful of smaller quakes from yesterday you know, we got one earthquake here from today Aside from that, uh, things look pretty quiet in Southern California. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here across the board for now. And uh, look at the seismograph stations, shows the uh, quietness prevailing out here. Not, uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity to mention here across the Yellowstone region. Rest of the country, there's that earthquake there from um, New Madrid Seismic Zone area, 3.3 coming in last night, Tennessee area. Nothing overnight, uh, far, well, nothing this morning or today so far. Into the Alaska area, 
clustering going on here across the Cook Inlet area. Mostly smaller microquakes, but uh, a noticeable increase up there today. Also along the Gulf of Alaska area, along that plate boundary. The big island of Hawaii. Let's see what we got here for the movement. Looks like Kilauea Volcano, pretty active overnight far as earthquake activity goes. I don't think we've seen a return to the eruption status though, but we're going to double check that and see. Latest update here from the Kilauea or the uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory on Kilauea shows that the volcano is not erupting. So just kind of continuing to see some inflation and um, earthquake activity. The summit of Kilauea remains at a high level of inflation and eruptive activity is possible in the coming weeks or months. So just a matter of time, I say we watch for uh, the earthquake activity. It's key to keep an eye on that. Obviously, we got swelling going on in this area, uh, but it's limited to this area, it seems like. We're not really seeing that advance too close here to the, uh, uh, the, sum the, the uh, lava lake area. So, uh, you know, there's a couple different scenarios that could play out here. We could see uh, with the swelling, maybe some uh, new fissures opening up here in this area. Or maybe it could uh, eventually find its way back up to the crater area. But we'll continue to watch that and report back on it. For now, just earthquake activity and uh, a bunch of inflation going on at a volcano. That's pretty obvious. A lot, a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, one earthquake here in Iran this morning, a 4.0. For the most part, though, this other activity from yesterday. Let's see what we got on the Earthquake 3D globe. 2.7 coming in right now. Uh, looks like around the Turkey area. Atlantic Ocean, for the most part, pretty calm and clear. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity ramping up there today. And um, so we'll just take a... We'll keep an eye on this area over here. The Australia plate looks like things want to uh, move. We've seen a lot of adjustment here with the um, Pacific plate here recently. Let me go back to this one map here. Let's see what we got overnight up here. Got one more 4.7 in the Izu Trench area. This one, this is an area that we've seen quite a bit of swarming kicking up here in the past couple weeks. It has died down, but uh, it looks like it may want to kick back up. But there's been tremendous movement here across the Australia region. Uh, the uh, general plate stress up here is probably quite high within this zone. Uh, but also at the same time here, we can't uh, forget about the potential of some movement here across New Zealand. It's been uh, hit and miss with some smaller earthquake activity, but... I think it's got a little bit of catching up to do here. I keep saying that, but uh, just a matter of time. One earthquake here into the Tonga area, it looks like, from uh, yesterday. So this is going to be somewhat of a quiet zone for the most part today in a region that normally sees, well, daily activity. But for now, it's kind of quiet. Space weather activity real quick, see what's going on here on the sun. I don't think there's a whole lot. We're starting to look like solar minimum here. Um, not a whole lot overnight. Down into the B flare category. Now this is the flaring category, the flaring of the sunspots. But overnight we did see some auroras kick up there uh, into some of the states there in the lower 48 with the G1 class storm. Now that's, I mean they they kind of forecasted it a little bit, but uh, I think it uh, hit a little bit harder than they said it was going to be uh, due to the uh, BZ component tilting south allowing a lot of the solar particles to flow right in and create those elevated conditions um, that has since died down that was uh, again last night when we kicked up the kp index around the 5 g1 class storm category uh, for now lowering lowering a little bit uh, but it still looks somewhat active there on the um other side of the earth where it's a little bit darker i would say all right uh what do we got for storm prediction center here today not a whole lot look at this very quiet only a only a little bit of thunderstorm activity up there in the extreme northeastern portion of the states not a whole lot going on there 
for us here in Northern California, we do have uh, a low pressure system here. Going to bring some rain and some cooler temperatures here to the West Coast. And that is very welcome because I am completely done with summer. There's our low pressure trough out here. Going to bring some cooler temperatures. And it looks like yeah, it looks like we might have another clipper going on up here north uh, into the middle of next week. Hopefully that dips down in Northern California either way. High pressure building out here across the eastern portion of the country, indicating some warmer temperatures for you guys. And um, it's crazy how much this changes from even last night. <laughs> so, you know, we're on these little weather models here, we can pretty much only be certain with probably, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five days out. Once you get past that, then things can change. So. At least for the weekend, the weekend looks cooler out here for California, beginning of next week. Uh, Monday looks, you know, like cooler temperatures as well for California. High pressure building out there for uh, a portion of next week. After that, we'll have to keep an eye on it and see what changes. These weather models are just, they go all over the place sometimes. All right, folks. We'll catch you guys back here later. Today's Saturday. I have a bunch of schoolwork I have to get caught up on before Monday. And uh, we'll have a good day. And we'll chat you guys a little bit later on tonight. Take care, folks.